Hello everyone, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my skincare hits and misses for the month of April. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it all right. This is my second month running of doing hits and misses. Whoa, I didn't think it was going to happen, but I did ask you guys on a poll on Instagram how often you would like to see these, and most of you guys did say once a month. It's a great way to talk about products that I feel like don't yet have a place in one of my other videos. So let's get started. Yeah. We're going to start off the video with some SPFs because I know you guys love them. First one is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice Plus Pro. Biotics. Holy shit, you guys. I don't know why I hadn't tried this earlier. I am pretty sure we have all seen it all over social media. And if you haven't tried it like me until recently, I am pretty sure you are the odd one out. I did film a first impressions um, reel for Instagram trying this out for the first time. So if you do want to see my genuine first reaction of trying this one, head over to my Instagram to see the full reel. But yeah, this SPF is totally worth the hype. When I first grabbed a little bit on my fingers, I did notice it was just like oh melting gosh, and sliding really down my hand my just hand. from my body temperature. So when I applied it on my skin, it just glided across and melted in. No worries, no white cast, no nothing. It's probably one of the easiest sunscreens to blend out on your skin. It is a certified SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 chemical sunscreen. It contains rice extracts as well as fermented ingredients under the name of probiotics. Fermented ingredients just seem to work really well for my skin and rice is one of my favorite ingredients to help smooth out skin texture as well as brighten an even skin tone. I honestly have no complaints about this sunscreen. I reached for it every day for about a week since I opened it. I absolutely love it. It does leave your skin well hydrated, moisturized, and really plumped out, but it probably will be better for people with normal to dry skin since it does have somewhat of a dewy finish. It is also very affordable. On their official site, they sell it for 18 US dollars, and it usually sells for around 15 to 20 dollars depending on the retailer. If you see it at a good price, I would definitely recommend snatching it up. 1000% a hit for me as well. Next, I have the Kose Suncut Pro Defense Tone Up UV Sunscreen Stick. So I don't know if you guys know already, but Kose Suncut did recently discontinue a bunch of their sunscreens, specifically the ones that were in their blue packaging called the what was it, UV Protect range. I did actually enjoy these SPFs, both the Essence and Gel formulas were wonderful, lightweight, um, really affordable options. So it is quite sad news that they have discontinued the whole range. To somewhat replace that range, I guess they did release a whole new line called the Pro Defense series that has a total of six products. I was very curious, so I did buy a few of this new Pro Defense series off of Yes Style, I believe it was. And they did have a stick, which got me very curious because Japan doesn't actually do SPF sticks or sun sticks very often so I was like oh I do want to try it out and it also had this like beautiful purple like shiny packaging it's just so cute but I don't know why I didn't think this one through because it is a tone up sun stick meaning that it does have a slight lavender color to it i generally like to use sun sticks for reapplication throughout the day as well as wearing it on top of makeup and maybe it is due to its tone up properties but it it pills. I always seem to have this issue with tone up skincare. It always tends to pill on my skin. I don't know if everyone experiences it or not, but I assume that it's something in the color formulation that's quite hard to make it that perfect formula. I also definitely have to blend it in with my fingers. It's not like a transparent sun stick where I can whack it on and be done. I do have to blend it in with my fingers to make sure that it's like an even coloring all over or else it looks absolutely ridiculous. And I'll be honest, I haven't had too many opportunities to use this properly. As I said, I generally use it as reapplication. I don't like to use sun sticks as my morning all over full coverage um, SPF because it is quite hard to get a full coverage and you have to apply a decent amount, which doesn't always work underneath makeup. I did try it out on Logan, my partner, the other day just because I wanted to see it like not on my skin but on someone else. And the tone up evening out effect actually looks 
gorgeous. It really did kind of blur out and smooth out that skin texture and tone. It made it look like a porcelain doll, like very luminous and smooth. So the effect you get when you apply it properly is actually really nice. I will say I have to kind of experiment with it to see how to use it best. In terms of convenience and practicality, it is a miss for now. Next, I have the Number Zen Number 5 Goodbye Blemish Serum. As you can see, I have not used a ton of this product yet, but you guys know I love the brand Number Zen, so I thought I would share with you guys my kind of first thoughts on this serum. First of all, I do think the name is very intriguing for a lot of people, Goodbye Blemish Serum. Although, I must say it is more a brightening post-breakout serum rather than a serum that would actually help current or prevent breakouts. Not saying that it won't work for that since it does have ingredients that are good for acne prone skin. The first ingredient that makes up 75% of the product is sea buckthorn extract. This is known as a good source of vitamin C as well as B vitamins, vitamin E, and it also has antioxidant and soothing effects. Essentially, it is a brightening serum that I would recommend for people who find regular vitamin C or like ascorbic acid based vitamin C's to be too harsh on the skin. This serum has no warming or no tingling feeling whatsoever. If anything, it's actually more of a cooling feeling because of its light but juicy gel texture. It spreads out very easily and sinks into the skin almost instantly without that feeling of tackiness, but is still very hydrating. So I would definitely recommend it for people who have acne prone or oily skin. It does have a fragrance to it, but oh my God, it is so good. It is this sweet citrus smell. It smells like, um, what is it called? CC lemon. It's like a soda drink in Japan and it smells so good. And it smells like pretty much exactly like that. Oh, the only thing I would be wary of is applying too much at once. They do say to apply two to three pumps all over the face. When I applied like three, I felt like the texture kind of like glugged up on my skin. It was just like too much for my skin to handle at once. So I would say one per cheek is plenty. So far it is a hit in terms of user experience and texture and all of that, but I will have to test it a little longer for long term effects. Next I have the so good, feel so calm toner pad. Ooh, so this is so good. Did that work? <laughs> if you guys didn't know already, I am a huge fan of Sue Beauty. She is so positive and funny, and I feel like we have a lot of the same skincare tastes. It was no surprise that I loved the toner pads produced by her. These are genuinely the softest toner pads I have ever tried. I do use toner pads fairly often, not every single day, but I do reach for them when I am feeling lazy. Generally, they can be used as a form of exfoliation, which I love love this aspect of them since I am very much into gentle forms of physical exfoliation. But sometimes I do want to use toner pads that don't have that exfoliating factor or don't have a bit of roughness to the toner pad and that is when I reach for these ones. They are soaked in a hydrating and soothing essence that contains 83% cabbage leaf water which has skin regenerating, soothing and antioxidant properties as well. They are also a really large toner pad. If you notice, they are a little bigger than your average toner pad. So it um, gives really good coverage and they're so hydrating. Like, look at that. Just like a quick swipe and they are so very hydrating. And even just one toner pad is enough to kind of swipe across and hydrate your whole face. It is obviously a hit. The only feedback I've got for you, Sue, is that we'd love a little set of tweezers or something to take out the pads next time. But I absolutely love the packaging. Even like the little comments that are written on it, as long as you feel good, nothing else matters. Like I read that in her voice, in that positive bubbly voice. And I think it is so awesome that she released her own product. So proud of you, Sue. <laughs> Next, we have the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel. So we actually bought this one for Logan's mum initially because she wanted to get into a little bit more skincare but didn't have a specific routine at the moment. I personally think Good Molecules is a great brand to start off with because of its simplicity, being affordable. The products are also made in Korea and they do free shipping over $35 in the US. So it was really easy to get out a package to her. She said she really 
enjoyed it and I had a unopened one in my stash so I was like why not she um, kind of made me want to try it out myself. It is a very simple gel cleanser with 13 ingredients which honestly is never a bad thing. The highlighted ingredients are the rose water which is known as an antioxidant and then it also does have pineapple extract to purify which I assume they mean step before exfoliating because pineapple extract is known to be a gentle form of exfoliant in higher concentrations. It is nothing fancy but it is very easy to reach for and it is in a nice glass bottle with a pump. Kind of fancy but it is only $12. The texture is more like a jelly than a gel. I would say it's somewhere in between the Crave Matcha um, Hydrating something cleanser and the Revectin gel cleanser. It's kind of that in-between texture. It lathers up a little bit, not like a ton, but feels really comfortable on the skin when you are cleansing. At first I did think that maybe it was a little bit drying, but then I realized that I was trying it out in the mornings, which literally for like possibly close to six months now, I rarely use a cleanser in the morning. So that's probably why it was just my dry ass skin that was um, struggling with the tightness in the morning. And when I use it as a second step cleanser after my oil based cleanser, I did not feel that dryness. I would say it is a hit. I would probably keep it in the shower as a quick and easy everyday cleanser once I use up my Revectin one that is currently in my shower. Next I have the Man Your Pure Cleansing Oil. I did introduce this one in my recent to get unready with me video a very enjoyable cleanser to use if that makes any sense whatsoever does have a slightly thicker texture than what I usually like or usually use in a oil cleanser but the way it feels when you're massaging it massaging it why can't I say that word normally massaging it on your skin is I don't know it just it just feels good. It is a made up of a blend of natural oils. I will leave all the oils um, ingredients up on the screen, but it does have quite a number of them and it has the most lovely spa like fragrance to it as well. It emulsifies easily and it washes off easily too, cleanses without drying the skin out and it does take off most makeup fine. I will say it didn't quite remove all of my waterproof mascara, but I feel like the mascaras I use are beyond waterproof. Yes, they are the Japanese ones. Japanese mascaras are literally the most waterproof budge proof thing you will ever use and I don't expect most oil cleansers to remove that so no it didn't remove that but other makeup it does seem to remove fine. It also doesn't sting when using it around my eyes which is definitely another tick. I feel like it's one of those products that are like Korea's best kept secrets because I don't see that many people talking about it globally but when I go on like Olive Young and other Korean retailers it seems that it has been winning awards for years running now. Definitely a hit in my books. Last product I have today Today is the Laneige Radiancy Cream. Okay guys, this is not anywhere near a first thoughts on this product because that is how much of the product I've used. I kept trying to change my mind about it because obviously I've used a decent amount without actually really talking about it on my um, social media platforms and honestly it hasn't impressed me that much. So many people seem to have loved this one and have been raving about it so I was doubting um my own thoughts but once again everyone's taste in skincare is different and skincare does work differently for every single person no matter if you have the same skin type or same skin journey so I guess it just wasn't the right fit for me. When I first opened it I was definitely surprised by the texture. When I saw videos and stuff online it kind of looked like a more lightweight like not lotion-y but in between a gel cream and a thick cream texture but as you can see like it is a pretty thick texture. Although once you do warm it up on your fingertips, it does turn into a beautiful buttery texture, which also seems great. But once I applied it, I don't know, I just feel like it just sat on my skin and didn't really absorb. And then once it dried down, it kind of had like a semi matte finish, but was still like a thick product. Yeah, the user experience, the texture was just not 
my thing and I felt like I had to use a decent amount on my whole face. This stuff is not cheap. It is only 30 mils, which is small for a moisturizer. Most of the time moisturizers are at least 50 mils and in Australia it costs $48 for 30 mils. So it is definitely on the pricey side. I do love that it is a moisturizer that contains vitamin C and brightening effects and maybe it has done something for my skin. It has been the main moisturizer that I've been using the past month and I feel like my skin is very even and bright and kind of um, looking good these days but if I solely used this moisturizer every day morning and night I don't think it would even last me a month like literally just a few weeks so I am just not for that price tag and I feel like if you're going to get something like this you're better off buying a vitamin c serum and then a moisturizer that you really like and you could probably get that for less than um, $48 that <laughs> this cream costs. Also this citrus smell it's like not that nice um it does have a citrus smell and it's there but it smells more like cleaning product citrus smell rather than like an enjoyable candy like citrus smell so unfortunately it is a miss although I will keep using it like it's fine I can use it it's totally fine but I do prefer to use it at night time where I am okay with that kind of finish and texture on my skin I must say the packaging is an absolute a plus it is so freaking adorable like look at that it does have that luxurious weight to it and it does also come with this cute orange spatula to go with it as well so the packaging is absolutely gorgeous but yeah unfortunately it was a miss for me all right you guys i hope you enjoyed my april hits and misses was there any products that you liked or didn't like or what was your favorite products that you opened up this month please let me know in a comment below and if you do want to check out any of my other content please click on one of these two videos that i have selected for you guys to watch and make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>